This is the first man to walk the complete Appalachian Trail who is blind. Bill Irwin is his name. He described this journey in his book, Blind Courage. It's a wonderful book. This picture is taken 250 yards from the northern terminus at Mount Katahdin in Maine. And unbeknownst to him, he was greeted uh, by uh, the entire congregation. And they greeted him by singing. So I'm going to sing for you because I heard this tune as we were listening to this morning's video presentations played in bagpipes. This is how they greeted him. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see. Shortly, <laughs> shortly after I read this story, I, I heard it sung in uh, Native American church. I am uh, going to do this to honor uh, my Lakota relative who uh, trained 35 years almost with me, uh, my Lakota brother, Emil Redfish. Uh, this is what it sounds like in Cree. Eana, hene, eana, he, he, a te, a te, eti, aia, eti, aia, aia, au ino, eana, hene, eti, aia, aia, e gitata, welelo, au ino, au ino, eti, aia, e gitata, welelo, au ino, eana, so I always wanted to do this. A Jewish boy from New York on Shabbos singing a Protestant hymn. Thank you. This is what I want to tell you. There are people who are blind who can see things that the rest of us can't even imagine. Vision has nothing to do with whether you are sighted. It has to do with whether you are willing to see in the darkness. That's what vision is about. There are people who are blind who see things the rest of us can't even imagine. You've got to make a leap of faith. I don't mean this in a religious sense. Is that clear? A leap of faith. The sense that somehow you can trust some intuitive aspect of your soul that will help you move beyond your limitations and be able to achieve something that previously you hadn't even imagined. That's the task. And the last thing I want to tell you is that in the healing profession, it's not we who are doing it, right? Nobody does it alone. We are connected with a whole source of therapeutic influences, families, beliefs, it doesn't matter what it is, things that connect us to something other than ourselves that remind us that we are not alone. This is my plea, the pop psychological dogma of the last 30 years. Do your own thing. You're all you got. You're number one. Paddle your own canoe. Nonsense. That's not to say that you are not important. I'm suggesting your choices are critically important. How you come to the events in your life is important. But you're not in it alone. Nobody makes it alone. Nobody makes it alone. All of us need to be connected. It's the nature of our biology to be connected to something other than ourselves. It's why we have belly buttons that serve no useful physiologic function after our birth. This shriveled remnant is simply a reminder that we were once connected to somebody other than ourselves. All of us have dependent needs. That's different than suffering from dependency. Dependent needs. We need to connect. It's not a solo experience. Doing your own thing does not mean not being connected to something other than yourself. Find something to connect to, something you believe in, something that reminds you that you are not in it alone. This is not a plea for ecclesiasticism. I don't care what you connect to. Greenpeace, the mountains in Talkeetna, Alaska, 
Dolphins, Greenpeace, old growth forests, the land that's been given to you, God, they may all be names for the same thing. But it's got to be something other than you. Connect to something you believe in. It's very difficult in contemporary American life to connect to anything we believe in because all of the institutions that once sustained us have been shown to be shallow and untrustworthy, if not frankly criminal. You need to find something that you believe in. I don't care what that is, but it's got to be something other than you. Connect with it all. Among the Lakota, they say you want to come to the whole world as if it's your relative. They end every gathering, whether it is sweat lodge, whether it is a public meeting, whether it is a Sundance ritual with the words mitakwiasi, mitakwiasi, to all my relations, come to the world as if it's a relational network. That way we can touch each other's souls and hope that we will survive. Make relationships, get connected. You got to find something to suck from, if you will. Sucking, by the way, has gotten a very bad name. I, I, I didn't realize that sucking was bad until one day at the dinner table when my children were quite young, uh, my daughter at the dinner table says, my teacher sucks. You know, I got an Ivy League degree. I know suck is a verb. I say, your teacher sucks what? <laughs> she says, you are such a dweeb. <laughs> she just sucks. She's terrible. I don't know how sucking got such a bad name. Sucking is good. Find something to suck from. <laughs> Everybody sucks. <laughs> we should change the watchwords of the 60s that said, keep on trucking. <laughs> Find something. Find something you believe in. It reminds us of our humanity. That's what I want to tell you today. I could have abbreviated all of these comments and said, what you saw in the video today that honored uh, your awardees is everything that I want to talk about. You already have this message. Look again at everything you know. Come from a place of truth that reminds you of what it is you like best about who you are. Say straight with your lips what you feel in your heart. Touch people in ways that remind them that they are not alone and that remind you of what it is that you came into the profession for. Reach out so that we can touch each other and remind ourselves of the blessings that have been shared with us and the commitment that we make as a profession to do no harm, to touch people in good ways, and to remind us of our noblest selves. I congratulate you. I wish you well in the future. I say this for all my relations. Mitakwiasi. Thank you very much.